Laura from Watch Laura So, and today we are going to be talking about the equipment and materials that we need to do free motion quilting. So free motion quilting is a machine-based type quilting. The number one thing is you need a sewing machine. Here's the deal. When I first started, I started on a very inexpensive brother machine from a big box store and it did not drop the feed dogs. It was not a perfect machine for free motion quilting and yet that's what I learned on. One thing that you can do if that's your situation, you can get a uh, what is called a slider. It's called a supreme slider. It will make things easier to uh, free motion quilt. And the other thing is that it kind of covers the feed dogs so you can actually kind of go smoother over it. So if you're in that situation where you cannot drop the feed dogs, you're really trying to get better at free motion quilting, then you could get a Supreme, it's called Supreme Slider. And there are others out there, but I've only used the Supreme Slider. So uh, I'm sure the others are just as good. Uh, so find one that you like and use that. This is what is called the Supreme Slider. And you can see that there is a hole in the middle. My Supreme slider is pink on the other side and it has kind of a, just a little bit tacky surface. So it wants to stick. So what you do is you put it over your area and you wanna leave a hole. The hole is where the needle goes through. And then you want to smooth it out as best you can. Mine is pretty old, got a few wrinkles and a little bit of marks on it. So basically, if we were using the foot that's on here right now is a zipper foot. And, but if we were using a free motion foot, and this is the free motion foot for this machine, and I like to, like I was saying, this is an open toe, and I'll show that better in just a minute. But if I'm free motion quilting with this a Supreme slider, and there are other sliders out there, other brand names. So one could use any one of them probably. Uh, I don't have a preference. This is just what I already have and use. So and they, they last a long time unless you hit it with a needle. Like if you hit this area frequently with a needle, then it probably won't last as long. We've been working on meanders, so I'll just do a little bit of a meander. And I need to drop my feed dogs, put my straight, stitch length to zero. <laughs> that would really help. So, um... We'll do a leaf this time. And this time we'll do an oval or a balloon. This time we will do, hmm, what should we do this time? Let's just do a spiral. We haven't done that yet. And as you can see, it's very nice and smooth. to kind of run along here. Using the Supreme Slider. Now they come in different sizes. I believe this size is actually the regular size. There is a queen size, which is even bigger. Uh, and 
you would have to double check on which size would be appropriate for your machine. So this is a Supreme slider and it, I like using it, especially with this Juki. I don't use it with my Viking because my Viking is pretty slippery to begin with. And then to store it, I actually take this and I roll it up like this and I store it that way. So when I unroll it, it's kind of curvy, you know, but you just kind of flatten it out. So that's how I store it and works out pretty well. So that's the Supreme Slider. If you are not able to get one of those, then just try and work with the Feed Dogs Up. I mean, you can quilt with Feed Dogs Up. And I'm going to do a video where I show quilting on different machines. I'm going to show with the Feed Dogs Up because you can do it. Now, it's not, it can kind of catch a little bit on you, but that's okay. Just keep going and you can do it. So you need a sewing machine. It does need to be able to go down to a st stitch length of zero. Well, I said that, but you know what? I have inadvertently quilted with my stitch length at like 2.5 and it turned out just fine. Um, not as smooth as when the stitch length is zero. So the right thing to do is if you have a sewing machine and you can drop your feed dogs, drop your feed dogs and go to a stitch length of zero. You're going to hear me say that a lot when I'm doing my quilting. I'm going to say I've dropped my feed dogs and I went to a stitch length of zero. If you have a walking foot, that's a fantastic thing to have with your sewing machine as well. It's worth the investment if you're going to be doing a lot of quilts because I do use that to stabilize the borders and to stabilize the outside edge. And so that actually is a very important thing. This is a walking foot. The objective of the walking foot, and I'll start up here, is that you can, it holds both the top and the bottom fabrics so that it keeps everything, it feeds them at the same time. This is a very loud walking foot. You don't need, you don't need a walking foot, but it sure does help. Having an open toe foot, you need a quilting foot and quilting foots can either come in closed toe or open toe. I'm going to show you a, a example in just a minute. I prefer a clear open toe. That is my preference on all equipment. However, not every pe not every sewing machine gives you an open toe that is clear. Sometimes it's all metal. It's a metal open toe. But I do prefer the open toe. Other people like a closed toe. For me, I want to see exactly where the needle's going into the uh, quilt sandwich. So this is the open toe, and I prefer I prefer the open toe and. Uh, on my other machine, I have a clear one and I prefer that even more. But I think in the case of the Juki, uh, it only has metal. And then this is the closed toe. And you can see the difference. For a live machines, there are two different things that you have to know. You can have a high shank or a low shank. Uh, a high shank is for the machines that uh, You'll know, like, look on your manual for your sewing machine to find out if you have a low shank or a high shank a sewing machine, foot for the sewing machine. And then buy the appropriate one. They come in both high shank and low shank, and it depends on your manufacturer for your sewing machine and what they require for your sewing machine. So I don't have that you know, I wouldn't know that for you, but you can look it up. You can read your manual. They usually have a part number in there or they describe what they're looking for, for a quilting foot. That's what many people use and it has a little spring on it. That's important because you're bouncing up. You're kind of bouncing a little bit when you're doing free motion quilting. So the spring is very important. Okay, um, good thread. Good thread is always important. Uh, for this, but it's if you have a lot of thread breakage, 
you're going to want to get a better thread or a newer thread because it could be the thread is pretty old. It could be your tension. I mean, that can cause that problem. And um, there are other reasons that it, that can happen. But the first thing I would do is change my needle and change my thread and see if you still have that problem. Someday we'll go through uh, some normal uh, problems with sewing machines and see if that uh, if that can help because that is something that really does happen quite a bit. I used to use the old Craftsy thread and you can't find that very much anymore. It was really a good thread <laughs> and I liked it very much. Uh, Arafil is one of the closest ones to it and I like that too. Glide is my favorite one for the Juki TL18 on the on my Viking, I use Arafil. On my Juki, I use Glide of almost exclusively. So, and that's a polyester thread, but it does very well. It's very strong and it does very well and it's affordable. That's the other thing. Some of these threads are pretty expensive, but the Glide is actually very affordable. Now we are actually doing a little bit of apples and oranges. I'm going to show you the difference between the cotton Arafil, which is the white one. The old Craftsy, which I mentioned, and I really like that thread. Those, both of them are 50 weight threads. And I use our fill and the Craftsy on the computerized uh, sewing machines rather than on the mechanical machine. The, the Juki is a mechanical machine. The, uh, the Viking that I use frequently, the Topaz, is a computerized machine and I use the Arafil or the Craftsy. Craftsy is very hard to find now. In fact, almost impossible. Arafil is pretty much the closest to it and I like it the best. And so both of these are 50 weight. The thread here I use on the Juki and this is glide thread and it is actually a 40 weight which means that it's a little bit thicker. It is polyester. It works very well. But you can find Glide at different places. Uh, one of the places, there are a couple of places I use to find Glide thread. Arafil is pretty easy to find. You can even find that on some of the big online stores <laughs> that have, you know, two day delivery. <laughs> you can find it there, but, um, for Glide thread, thread, there are two places I recommend. One is uh, Panther Purrs Quilting, uh, and that's on Etsy, Panther Purrs Quilting. And she will ha she has sets of uh, Glide thread, so that's really nice. And she does uh, also have some individuals. The other place I would look to is Gigi's Fabric Shop. In Florida, it's in Tampa, Florida, or somewhere near Tampa, Florida. <laughs> All right, so thread's very important. You need to get the right type of thread. Uh, those are the ones that I use. I've used some others, and there are other good ones out there. Put it in the comments below if you have others that are your favorites. The other thing you need to get is some gloves. And this, I find, so people will recommend, well, go ahead and get uh, gardening gloves. I find that they don't work for me. Uh, the gardening gloves are a little bit thicker and I don't get as good a grip uh, or I can't feel it as well. So I think that it's really important to get, I do think it's important to get the right quilting gloves on this. And so I use machiner's gloves and I also have used Fonz and Porter. I like those very much because they actually fit better than the machiner gloves. The machiner gloves are a little bit looser and I have very long, I have very long fingers. So I have to really work at finding the right gloves. That is really the basics of what you need. You don't need a lot of things to try free motion quilting. 
I think the biggest thing about free motion quilting is just trying it and having the patience for it. And that's really the big thing about it. So we're going to start our lessons um, in the next video. We're going to take it kind of slow and start out. Um, just go at your pace. And if you get frustrated, know that I've been there. And um, I've been, I've had tears. I've been frustrated. I hope that I'm making it easier um, to do and build the skill so that you can do your own free motion quilting too. So, all right, everyone, I hope you have a wonderful day. And next time I will see you at the sewing machine. Bye-bye.